Hi, uh, Paul Reckwin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul um, at the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Um, this is part two. I've just been talking about Arctic sea ice graphs, and I talked about Nevin's blog recently and some very interesting comments on it about what happens when we have no sea ice. Basically, Greenland is the cold center. So instead of the climate systems, the weather patterns, the ocean patterns, um, working with a cold North, uh, North Pole, we have a cold area over Greenland, which is offset and displaced from the North Pole, and there's, everything changes correspondingly. And then when Greenland gets darker, it loses a lot of sea ice, apart from sea, low, sea ice, loses a lot of ice, apart from sea level rise, um, then um, we get, we're, we, we tend towards a system, an Arctic that's much wetter, warmer, um, and uh, not much temperature change with latitude. Everything is rewired and shifted. Having my ginger beer, <coughs> excuse me, non-alcoholic uh, ginger beer. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the, uh, I'm gonna talk about, um, Zach Labe is a grad student, Arctic sea ice figure has done a, an excellent job. So I'm gonna talk about some of his uh, figures here. So if you just click on that, um, you get Arctic sea ice figures. And so this is, uh, let me uh, just change the uh, size here. Control minus, to shrink it a bit. This is sea ice extent in the Arctic. Um, so what you can look at is these, so this is the trend going down and um, okay, so we'll just let this play use satellites to observe changes. This is what we have now versus in 79, drop of 13.3% per decade. That's the dashed line, but these year to year variability. So 10 year linear trends, if you take 10 years and draw lines each time, you get these variable trends. Okay, this is land ice on Antarctica and on Greenland. And what you can see is the loss on Antarctica, this is from 2002 to 2017, the loss on Antarctica is about 2,000 gigatons of ice. This is mostly from melting from below, and the loss on Greenland is melting from below water on the ice that's uh, sitting on bedrock below sea level and melting from above, and it's darkening, and, and it's, almost, it's lost almost twice as much ice on Greenland as Antarctica, but the amount of loss from Antarctica is increasing and increasing and increasing. Now, a couple of years ago, I did a video, and if these trends continue, um, with the doubling periods continuing, um, we'll have seven meters of sea level rise by 2070. Okay, that's sort of conservatively. About half of that would probably be from Greenland and half from Antarctica. So Antarctica is, is rapidly losing sea ice and will catch up, even surpass the loss from Greenland. This is showing the um, Arctic sea ice concentration over the last 100 years through 2013 using National Snow and Ice Data Cent Center gridded um, reconstructed data from, from Walsh et al. Okay, so what you can see is year-to-year -year variation Okay, it used to fill the basin, okay, and now it's been dropping, um, and there's less and less ice, okay, as, as the years go on. Okay, this is an interesting plot because this is January through December, and this is years across there, and this is the sea ice extent, and the red is getting less and less sea ice extent. Okay, so as you go along here, the red curve is getting, first of all, it's getting redder and redder. There's less and less sea ice here to the yellows. Second of all, the spread here, it's narrow here and it's spreading out here. So the duration, the extent is lower for longer and longer periods of time. Okay, so it's starting to melt out earlier in the spring and it's also gone as we go into the fall. It's not forming as quickly. Okay, this is another view. This is sea ice thickness, okay, um, through the years. Okay, this is in December, PO mass data, December. So you take the volume from PO mass, divide by the extent of, of air, and then you can get the sea ice thickness. 
and what you can see is um, you can see in 84 you know I mean there's thick ice here and you know it's your there's year to year fluctuation but it's basically vanishing the, the thicker ice is is gone essentially okay there's no really thick ice left it's just first year ice um, this is a, these are anomalies departure is just gonna go on this is just uh, 2018 so this is this is a global anomaly it's much lower than the long-term average 81 to 2010 if you take the um, sea ice uh, extent that's what it is on average between those years and this is where we are in 2018 so global so we're, we're losing Arctic sea ice more quickly we're losing Antarctic sea ice and if you add the two together then you get a large negative anomaly okay uh, sea ice volume 27 this is the volume of sea ice through the years this is the average level and you can see you know in the early 2000s it's dropped and uh, it's continuing to drop you know great great work from Zach here to display all of this stuff sea ice thickness how it's getting thinner and thinner so this is through the year the thickness of the sea ice and you can see that the thickness of the ice is dropping at all months of the year less and less and less it's a big question when will it hit zero no sea ice you know it'll happen first in probably September you know September October and you know with the trend if you just take the trend if the trend continues it's probably hitting zero by um, within five years for 20 by 2022 or 2023 or earlier maybe even 2020 okay so this is great uh, stuff now he divides it into the Arctic there's some other graphs here which are different okay and how I got to those is I go down to the bottom and I was just clicking okay if you go down to the bottom of the first image that you clicked on then you can select different um, data sets so this is uh, this is Arctic sea ice volume and thickness now let me hit control minus again to shrink it and what you can see is this is the volume on this chart here and this is the sea ice thickness in the Arctic so it's just another way to depict the data so start 1979 that's when we started getting decent satellite data and you can see the volume in cubic kilometers decreasing and decreasing and you can see where the ice is okay so this is um, this is December sea ice thickness and volume from 1979 to 2017 okay so it used to fill the whole basin be thick and now it fills less and less of the basin and it's a lot of thin a lot thinner so the volume is small you know we're starting to lose it it's not filling the extents there as I showed you on a, on a previous plot this is sea ice thickness in December okay um, thickness in meters okay uh, this area here is two to three meters okay and then the anomaly from the climatology from the long-term average from 81 to 2010 um, so in these areas here we've lost over two meters of thickness you know in the central basins here near the North Pole we've lost over one meter of ice and in these okay so these are the, the anomalies here okay um, you've seen this I believe Arctic sea ice volume okay so 2017 is the light blue curve here and uh, okay so that's that this is all programmed in Python Arctic temperatures okay so the control minus to shrink it okay so what this is showing is here's where we are this year the temperatures this you, you've seen a similar plot okay um, so this is from the Danish meteorological group um, this is the 1958 to 2002 mean and then these are the deviations from it okay so you can see that uh, freezing degree days it's another way of looking at it we're very very low 2017 2018 very very low another way of looking at it 
thawing degree days, Arctic temperatures. Look at the spiking of the temperatures here. So this is 1960 to, um, this is 2010. Okay, so we're going past there to where it is 2017 and the temperatures are spiking in the Arctic because there's less and less sea ice, the Arctic's a lot darker, it's absorbing more solar radiation. This is another view going back to 1900 and look at the spiking here. Look at this huge warming in the Arctic. Doesn't matter and this is showing you October to December 2017 is this curve, okay? Um, this is showing air temperature ranking by month. So the red is warmer and warmer and warmer. You know, this is the warmest. So this December in 2017 was the warmest December ever. The November was the third warmest November and so on. You can read it that way. Okay, so we're just going off of the chart. Um, sea ice extent and concentration. Um, there's, uh, you know, dropping off the charts, just divides it into different regions of the Arctic, okay, um, and changes over time and the annual minimum. This is where the minimum is, and so it's always in September. There is some variation, but it's all, uh, you know, about mid-September, first week of September to mid-September. Um, the annual max when it happens, it's more scattered because it's a flatter max. Uh, sea ice extent, Okay, there's all kinds of ways that it's depicted. This is Antarctic sea ice, how it's uh, changed over time. Okay, so now instead of going to that, I click on the sea ice form and you can look at the form and there's all kinds of data depicted. If you go down to the bottom, you get the most recent stuff. So this was just posted today, um, this image of ice movement. This is Lincoln Sea Nears export viewed, number of times it's viewed, and it's showing you the motion of the ice um, over time, okay? And there's all kinds of stuff here. If you wanna go up, you can just go this, there, and this is some, you know, yesterday's posts and things like that, and there's all kinds of graphics. I mean, this is a way to learn all about the Arctic, and then you can assess for yourself when you think the ice is going. Also on the forum, um, I, the, I, uh, this, I've selected Greenland, and you can get um, the Greenland melt season in 2018, information on the nearest strait, what's new in Greenland, things like that. So you just click on it. You need to join in order to make your own posts, or you can just lurk and read. So this is uh, Greenland, for example. Um, lots of images of where the melt is and so on compared, this is the average, this is what's happening in 2018, we're melt starting, all kinds of stuff here. And you can also go in the um, sea ice form, you can click on um, Antarctica. So we're looking here in Antarctica, sea ice around Antarctica. There are posts here today, ice apocalypse, multiple meters sea level rise, lots of stuff on here. Let's look at that one, for example. Okay, so, and you need to go to here for the most recent one. That's one of the things, I think it should be in reverse chronological order. Losing all ice from Greenland ice sheet in 500 years is not something I've seen. Well, you know, no, I haven't seen it either. Um, um, Applegate et al, peer reviewed reference, seven meters, eight meters by 2,500. Yeah, right, as if that's going to happen by then. Um, and there's all kinds of information on here, different models, and, you know, it's just what people post. There's a, there's a lot of very knowledgeable people on here. You know, they go and they study the satellite data, and they post all kinds of stuff, and they comment about the recent literature and stuff, They're talking about Hansen's sea ice feedback and so on. Okay, so so that's where so this is what what we have here. So the net effect is we're losing sea ice. It's still happening extremely rapidly, and when it happens, it will completely rewire the atmospheric and ocean circulation systems on our planet. It's going to threaten global food supply and water supply. Thank you.